What's up guys, JB2017 here, and today I wanted to share my experience with the first 10 hours of Tom Clancy's The Division, which is a game I openly criticized after its beta. My main concerns were with the Dark Zone, but I also pointed out a lack of weapon variety, PvE enemies, and a few other issues I had. I'll be the first to admit that after playing the game non-stop for the past few days, I was wrong. I was dead wrong. This is a very well-crafted RPG set in a believable world. It's a true open world like most Ubisoft games, but the reason I'm making that distinction is mostly because of Destiny. That game is the complete opposite of what you'll experience in The Division. It feels so nice to experience a loot-based RPG in this living, breathing, open world. The downside to a realistic setting based on reality, you know, real world New York, is that players have to do a lot of running point to point between missions, but I think they get away with it for a few reasons. First, the game is gorgeous. Even on Xbox One, which probably looks the worst out of all versions, I find myself stopping and appreciating the level of detail and care that Ubisoft Massive took when creating this world. It really feels like I'm running around Manhattan and exploring New York after a deadly pandemic devastated the city. The setting feels so real that a crazy man running at me with an axe is actually terrifying. I can't tell you the last time that a game actually made me cringe when just a human, you know, was running at me. You know, it's not a zombie. Zombies don't scare me. Monsters don't scare me that much. But a real person is actually making me cringe. Or when an enemy, you know, executes a civilian, it makes me cringe. And I think it's because of this realistic setting that they've created. Created, it's an interesting feeling. It's really refreshing. I think they also get away with all the running because when you get to your destination, the missions are long and it makes it feel like the running was really worth it. Borderlands is a franchise that I've played that I think is suspect in this regard. They make you run over and over, you know, from place to place to do quick missions that are quick, like five minutes long, and it gets overwhelming. You're like, why am I doing all this running? This seems like half of the game. I think I've read there's almost 30 main missions in the division that progress the story. These are main missions, but each of them take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. They are long, but not just for the sake of being long. They're genuinely engaging. And along your rise to the max level of 30, the loot progression is addicting and rewarding. It's difficult making players feel like loot is rewarding because you can either starve them to death by giving them that rare piece every few hours like Destiny did, I think, around launch. I think that improved, you know, over time. Or you can overwhelm them with rare gear, which in the end doesn't make it feel all that special in the first place. Ubisoft Massive has struck a great balance that feels really rewarding. I receive upgrades for each piece of gear probably every 30 minutes, I would say, but I get a truly rare and special upgrade every hour or so. That balance seems to really work. Additionally, they have this skill system that's wrapped into the story, and it's really cool. As you gather the supplies, and you have to gather supplies to kind of take back New York from all of these, you know, humans that have decided to pretty much accept anarchy and, you know, take it over for themselves, you get to choose how you spend these supplies, and that in turn determines which skills you're going to get. Eventually, you're able to get all these skills, so it's not really super important in that respect, and there's also no class system with this game. And usually that's something that I don't like. I like a class-based RPG. That's just how I like a game. But somehow it works. And I think it's a great way of approaching skills in an RPG when most games like this would have you looking at a giant skill tree that can be really confusing and intimidating. It just makes sense in this game. It really flows very well. Now, I want to take a minute to explain more on why I've had such a change of heart from my experience with the beta. I was really harsh on the game and what I was going to expect. And I think it's because we were only allowed to play one story mission in the closed beta. It was one of the first medical missions. And then they added an additional mission, one of the tech missions in the open beta. The first part of the Dark Zone was also there, and it was this endless PvP experience that made it feel like that's what we'd be doing for a good portion of this game on release. And I'm happy to say that there is a solid 20 to 30 hour PvE game in the division that you can play completely solo by yourself with no one else if that's how you like to play games or co-op with friends. And I probably split my time 50-50 between playing by myself or playing with a few friends in co-op. And you can do everything co-op with friends together. It's really not segmented. Everything you can experience either solo or co-op. And I've probably stepped in the dark zone for maybe 30 minutes total so far, not a very long amount of time. And 
while the Dark Zone is still this mysterious and dangerous social experiment mode, you know, it's an interesting mode, you don't have to go into it. At least I haven't been thrust into it in my first 10 hours. I've gone to it just on my own or maybe a friend wanted to go in. That's how I've experienced the Dark Zone. And perhaps, you know, the Dark Zone plays a huge role in the end game. I'm not sure yet. But the point I'm trying to make is that there is an engaging and rewarding experience outside of Dark Zone PvP. While UB has made it seem like the Dark Zone is the end-all be-all in their marketing campaign, there is a well-crafted and genuinely fun PvE experience that I believe is well worth the $60 so far that I've paid for it. I love it. I love everything about this game so far. It's really a breath of fresh air. And they're also bringing a raid-like experience in April called Incursions for free, which is also something very cool. And I can't wait to play that. I've said a few times on my channel that expectations are dangerous. It's dangerous to have a certain expectation for a game because it might, you know, you might be let down when the actual game comes out. And I did have an expectation of what this was, and it was low, and I was actually impressed by this game, by the amount of depth, by how much I was going to enjoy the gameplay. And on the surface, it seems like this is a very generic third-person shooter with just some skills. You know, you've got some skills, and you can use those, and it doesn't seem that, you know, genuine and unique. It is. They have this whole package experience feeling that makes this game feel special. And on top of that, like I've said before, I really wanted more PvE experience out of this game than the Dark Zone. And the fact that they're adding incursions, which are more of a PvE experience, gets me really excited and will make me play this game longer than I expected. So I'd like to hear from you guys. If you have the game, how are you liking it? Are you you know, impressed so far? Did it meet your expectations? Did it not meet your, your expectations? Of course, some people might not like it. And also, if you don't have the game, does my video does my explanation make you want to play the game i know some of you agree with me on my concerns with the beta however i really do feel like this is a genuine experience worth the money in terms of a pve game share all of your thoughts in the comment section below all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video today and if you did remember to hit that like button i would really appreciate it I didn't plan on covering The Division, but I can absolutely make some tips and tricks videos similar to the way that I make Fallout 4 videos. Same format, 5-10 to 10 minutes showing you guys some helpful tips or sharing guides on how to do something in the game. There is potential here on my channel, but I want to see if you all are interested before jumping and diving into that. So let me know in the comments below if The Division tips and tricks are something you'd like to see on my channel, something you would actually watch. Of course, the Fallout tips and tricks would stay on my channel as the main focus, but I do a few of these videos you know each week so let me know what you guys think hope you guys enjoyed once again and i will talk to you all next time peace